Wondering what makes a good wife? Well, lucky for you, I came across a copy of Housekeeping Monthly, the May 13th, 1955 edition. And in it was an article called, What Makes a Good Wife? Here are some of the highlights. Let him talk first. After all, what he has to say is more important than what you have to say. Make him comfortable. This includes having a drink ready for him, encouraging him to lie down in a chair or bed, arranging his pillow, and taking off his shoes. Don't question him or his judgment. After all, he is master of the house. Finally, this last bit of advice. A good wife always knows her place. Well, that's one thing that hasn't changed. A good wife does know her place, and it's right here with me at Wife Savers by Ramona. Ask your husband for a pillow and a drink and your slippers because you're going to want to settle in for my major rewrite of A Good Wife's Guide. You and me, we can be on top of the world. Hi. I'm Ramona Zabriskie, married since 1977 and a good wife, mostly, since 1980. Before then, and honestly, periodically since, I was consistently inconsistent. What I mean by that is that when my need for independence and sovereignty, and we all have that as women, When that would just come on in full force, I pushed my husband away. And for disappointing me royally again and again, I gave him the royal treatment. But then I also had a need to feel loved and cherished. And when that overwhelmed that need for sovereignty and independence, right? Just like a tidal wave. Well, then I tried to reel him back in, but... My neediness got in the way of any real authentic connection. And my desperation hmm, kind of swallowed me up. That normally happy, confident Ramona, sabotaged by me. So what's a good wife to do or to be? What are the qualities of a good wife? A wife cannot be a good wife unless she's focused on creating the ultimate or the optimal balance between self-care, self-determination, and self-belief and balance. Did you hear anything about him in there? Anything about fetching his slippers or pouring him a drink? A wife, in order to be a good wife, I mean, she really can't be a good wife. She will forever struggle with that yo-yo between pushing him away, expressing her need for independence, and reeling him in, expressing her need for intimacy, (laughs) giving him nothing but a sore neck. Unless she learns how to take care of herself emotionally and physically. She makes and sticks with difficult choices and lives from the heart. She believes in her own objectives but finds a way to meld them with the hopes of others, including those of her husband. Let's take a closer look at the why behind each of those qualities. The first quality of a good wife. She takes care of herself emotionally and physically. Why is that so important? Because when you cross the streams, if you will, to create a partnership, a powerful romantic partnership. That requires giving. There's just no way around it. That requires giving. And giving is no fun and it's no help to anyone, including you, if it comes from a place of frustration, resentment, or depletion. Furthermore, marriage isn't just about giving. It's also about receiving, which we women a lot of us are pretty bad at, actually. If you want to be a good wife, you better be good at receiving or accepting love and attention from a deep-seated belief that you deserve that kind of nurturing and attention. The second quality of a good wife, 
She makes and sticks with difficult choices and lives from the heart. Too many women, in my opinion, think that being a good wife is about blending in or giving in. They think that the ideal is some kind of oneness, like to become one. But unity in a grand marriage is not about sameness and it's not about being in perfect agreement all the time. Unity in a grand marriage is about achieving the optimal balance between oneness and otherness. And you won't become a strong, sure partner to him unless you can make and stick with difficult choices. That is, you can actually own your own choices because you know what they are because you know your heart. You will be weak and less than helpful if you don't know your heart and you can't own your choices. The third quality of a good wife. She believes in her own objectives, but finds a way to meld them with the hopes of others, especially those of her husband. Actress Viola Davis's husband, Julius Tennant, has created a room in their home just for displaying her Academy, Emmy, and Tony Awards, as well as her citations and all of her photographs with important people, right? He you know, a whole room just to display those things. And it actually embarrasses her when visitors to their home get a tour of that room by Julius. But she recognizes that the act itself represents her greatest prize, which is her husband's heart. How did she win it? Your joy and happiness are important, she explains. Your husband's joy and happiness are important. But you can't operate separately with your own joy and go on your own path if it doesn't honor the big umbrella of the ultimate commitment. And I see people doing that a lot. They go off on their own tangent because it serves their own needs, a life choice that can literally affect the marriage. You've got to feed the good of the whole. Feeding the good of the whole that's a good mantra for a good wife, because if you're going to create a legacy love kind of relationship, you've got to think holistically. You, your husband, your children. Did you hear that first one? You, you have to put you in there too. The holistic picture includes the whole you. You know, every wife saver principle I teach can be summarized into one big philosophy. The objectives and actions of a successful woman and wife are the results of thinking proactively. What that boils down to is responding to your loved one, considered thoughtful action, instead of reacting to him, letting the first thought or feeling that comes to mind determine how you treat him. At a very deep level, the best kind of wife is a woman who is really confident in herself. She's sure, she's strong. Otherwise, she cannot respond to her husband in a big hearted way. If she's not rock solid inside, then the teeny tiny stresses of life, those split second tensions are going to just inflame her insecurities. And then, well, then we all know what happens then. And I wouldn't call it good. So there you go. That's my good wife's guide. And it's a lot shorter than the one from 1955, you have to admit. In fact, I think I could put the whole thing into one piece of advice, which is this. Don't worry about being a good anything, especially a good wife. Focus instead on becoming the woman of your dreams, whatever that means to you. And then, and only then, there's a good chance that you will become the woman of his dreams. Leave a comment below and let me know which of the qualities of the good wife you feel that you really need to work on or that you'd like more information on. And I'll try to create a video for you on that topic. And if you want to know when that pops up, you're going to want to subscribe 
to this channel. In the meantime, I invite you to join me at my free upcoming live webinar, Understanding Your Husband and Sons, where I will pull back the curtain on his brain, his body, and his emotional underbelly. I promise it's as entertaining and eye-popping as it is enlightening. You're gonna love it. The link is down in the description. As always, I am so happy to be your wife saver. See you next time.